Welcome to Life-Giving Water Messages, where I expound upon the Word of God and, through the internet, deliver it to you. My name is Rev. Todd Laddick, and today I'm bringing you part one of a new four-part series entitled Heroes of the Faith, with today's message specifically entitled Deborah, based off of Judges chapter 4, verses 4 through 11, and chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. So let us dive into the Word today. Deborah the wife of Lapidoth, was a prophet who was judging Israel at that time. She would sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites would go to her for judgment. One day, she sent for Barak, son of Abinoam, who lived in Kadesh in the land of Naphtali. She said to him, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, commands you. Call out 10,000 warriors from the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun at Mount Tabor. And I will call out Sisera, commander of Jabin's army, along with his chariots and warriors, to the Kishon River. There I will give you victory over him. Barak told her, I will go, but only if you go with me. Very well, she replied, I will go with you. But you will receive no honor in this venture, for the Lord's victory over Sisera will be at the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. At Kadesh, Barak called together the tribes of Zebulun and Naphtali, and ten thousand warriors went up with him. Deborah also went with him. Now Heber the Kenite, a descendant of Moses' brother-in-law Hobab, had moved away from the other members of his tribe and pitched a tent, pitched his tent by the oak of Zanim uh, near Kadesh, and also from Judges chapter five verses one through nine. On that day, Deborah and Barak, son of Abinoam, sang this song. Israel's leaders took charge, and the people gladly followed. Praise the Lord. Listen, you kings, pay attention, you mighty rulers, for I will sing to the Lord, I will make music to the Lord, the God of Israel. Lord, when you set out from Seir and marched across the fields of Edom, the earth trembled and the cloudy skies poured down. The mountains quaked in the presence of the Lord, the God of Mount Sinai, in the presence of the Lord, the God of Israel. In the days of Shamgar, son of Anath, in, and in the days of Jael, people avoided the main roads, and travelers stayed on winding pathways. There were few, few people left in the villages of Israel, until Deborah ro- ro- rose as a mother for Israel. When Israel chose new gods, war erupted at the city gates, yet not a shield or spear could be seen among 40,000 warriors in Israel. My heart is with the commanders of Israel, with those who volunteered for war. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sing a song of praise, for God is at work and calling us into partnership. Now, just at the end of June, I concluded my time as president of the Newton Rotary Club, which each presidency lasts from July to June. So uh, my presidency was from uh, 2022 through 2023. <clears throat> and so this past June, I just just finished up my, my year of being president. And during this year, we accomplished so many things. We've raised a considerable amount of money to combat polio, which has reared its ugly head back here in in the U.S. Uh, We collected tons of items uh, for homeless people within our community. We've contributed to organizations in our community like Benny's Bodega, the Newton uh, location of the uh, Market Street Mission, Daisy, Project Self-Sufficiency, so on and so forth. We are still partnered with a sister club in Sri Lanka and have donated tons of money for saving life, uh, for life saving, excuse me, heart operations on children in Sri Lanka, um, on children of Sri Lanka who uh, could not afford such life saving technologies and procedures. 
In Rotary, our motto is service above self. And while I was initially hesitant to take on that responsibility, given everything I am already responsible for, I decided to step up and put my money where my mouth is, so to speak, in terms of stepping up to volunteer. After all, I ask it of all, all of you, uh, so I should step up when being asked as well. And that I did. But I was nervous. Because what if it all fell on me? What if I had a hard time getting people to step up? What if? What if? What if? Yes, I said yes. And step up I did, and you know what? Others stepped up too and helped me out, and together we got a lot done. We did, we got a lot done. It would have never happened, though, if I were alone. It took a team of people. Sometimes I even find myself attempting to go things alone because I think it would just be easier than to ask for help. But that seldom ever works out well, amen? God never intended for us to be alone or on our own. And when we try to do things alone, when we try to do things alone, we can feel so overwhelmed and things can look so very impossible. Take our our church's current financial situation, for instance, maybe yours as well. A, a lot of churches are in this situation. Uh, which, given our post-pandemic attendance numbers, it, it almost seems we almost seem to face uh, impossible odds. Indeed, to surmount it, it is going to require all of us people, all all of our current members and church friends, to come together, each bringing their different gifts and graces, and even coming from unlikely places to accomplish this great task. So as we begin um, this hero series, we are reminded that God will invite who God will to serve God's greater purposes. Deborah is a prophet and a judge. According to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18, a prophet is one worthy of speaking on behalf of God. Deborah is the only woman prophet mentioned in the book of Judges and one of only five in the Hebrew scriptures. Now, a judge is a charismatic leader who rises during, uh, during troubled times to lead and is uh, often a national military leader. So Deborah is basically the shield maiden warrior general, the prophetic shield maiden warrior general of Israel chosen by God both to speak on God's behalf as a prophet and to lead God's people. And to think some Christians still have issues with female pastors. How would they handle Deborah? Or rather, how would Deborah handle them? This scripture is a song of rejoicing, inviting us to see where the victories of God are taking place. In those victories, first we see God is present to our needs and struggles. In the larger context, Israel is enslaved for 20 years and God is raising up a leader to rescue God's people. Uh, God uses us, to, uh, secondly, to fight the good fight together in the community. Barak did not want to go into battle without Deborah. And Deborah agrees to go to the front line of the war. She is confident and willing to speak God's truth to Barak, a commander of the troops who went on to defeat the Canaanite armies in chapter 4. And finally, God will win the battle. God partners with humanity, with those who are willing to say yes to serve God's purposes. Now, Deborah plays her part. Barak plays his part. And always God plays God's part. So let me ask this question. What is your part to play in God's redeeming work? 
Maybe you have felt a situation stirring in your heart. It could be a situation in your life, the church, or community. Maybe this is God calling you to stand up and offer yourself for God's purpose. Maybe you are called to get involved in coffee hour or in the potluck supper at our church if you attend our church or in something else that's going on at your church, but I'll speak to my church for now. Perhaps you're being called to join a small group such as our afternoon book club or our evening adult Bible study, our prayers and stitches group. And I wouldn't want to disappoint Henry if I didn't mention our choir. Or perhaps there's a spiritual or social justice issue you feel is needing to be addressed and you would like to talk to me or your pastor about some ideas you have that you'd like to work on. I know I'm always available to talk, pray with you, and discern about that or anything. And if you attend another church, I'm sure your pastor is as well. As a community, God has called us, United Methodists of Greater New Jersey, over the years to provide nothing but nets to the people of Africa, helping them avoid uh, malaria by covering them with nets as they sleep. Uh, we've, we've helped provide uh, and en- engage in advocating uh, against uh, school segregation in New Jersey. We've, over the years, uh, welcomed a thousand people to the uh, youth uh, conference uh, Ignite every year. Uh, again, we, we've uh, rebuilt homes after Hurricane Sandy. We've purchased a plane for missionaries to deliver supplies in the Congo, and the list goes on. None of these could have been achieved by one person. And all of these took leaders hearing God's call to embrace a mission larger than themselves and to support the shared ministries of the greater church. What are we called to as a community in this town at this time with our gifts and our graces? First and foremost, we are called to share the hope and love of Jesus with everyone. How can we do that? We have and can continue to do that through music. We have our Unity Choir concerts, but there are many other ways we can use that passion and those gifts to reach people. We have always hosted great fellowship events centered around food. I think of the international dinners we used to hold. And so long as people sign up to help, we can easily connect with people and resources that way. In our church... Just within a year's time, we brought in new members, started a Wednesday evening potluck small group, which has tons of potential. We had like 20 people there this past Wednesday, 20 people, many of whom were not uh, regular attendees at church, but yet are regular attendees of church on on, uh, Wednesdays at that potluck supper. So a community is forming there. We have blessed the community with two uh, Unity Choir concerts this year. We've once again opened our doors to our local uh, Cub Scouts troop, as we have uh, for 75 or more years. We we host uh, what I hope to be a wonderful uh, chair yoga class. Uh, Which, by the way, is uh, not only a great way to stay well, but also uh, a good way to get to know people who do not attend our church. Perhaps invite them to church, to our potlucks, or to any of our other events. The possibilities are limitless if, like Deborah, we put our faith in God and trust, not just in our minds, but through our actions. Friends. Together we can rise to the occasion and continue to do the great work that this church has done for many generations. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we just thank you and praise you for challenging us this morning with uh, the hope of yes. Lord, when we say yes to you, the hope of your uh, possibilities are limitless. 
And we, we know, Lord, that you have given us great hope and have called us to be agents of hope in the lives of others. So help us to be that. Help us to be like Deborah and to put our faith in you and to say yes when you call. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And friends, I want to thank you for tuning in. As always, it's great to be back from vacation. I missed you the last couple of weeks, but I uh, am cer- certainly glad uh, to be back and uh, to be bringing you uh, this message as I am with all messages, and I hope you're getting as much out of them as I am. Uh, with that said, uh, thank you for tuning in. If you have it in you and are able to support the ministries of uh, First United Methodist Church of Newton, uh, we do have links there for you to give um, and uh, would greatly appreciate that. But as with all, all things, we are so grateful you tune in, and I want to remind you that you You are richly blessed so that you may be a blessing to others. Go in peace.